How are we all? Good. Good morning. <clears throat> are you ready to go? Yep. Okay. Sorry. Well, today is the fifth day this week that I have called on David Christofoli uh, to pick up the phone to Scott Morrison and insist on a federal corruption watchdog. If he wants to be taken seriously on integrity matters, why is he refusing to say or do anything to ensure that our federal government is held to the very same high standards that we are held to here in Queensland? He won't do it because he is absolutely not genuine about these issues. I want to repeat what the Deputy Premier said today. All of these matters are either currently under investigation by the appropriate body, and in some circumstances that is the Triple C, or they have been investigated. Just because the LNP leader stands up and throws mud, it doesn't mean it's true. And even today, I think this is the third day he has made an off-the-cuff comment that RTI officers are sitting in ministerial offices. He knows full well that that is absolutely not true. He knows that each of us delegate our responsibilities under the RTI Act, and those officers sit at arm's length within a department. That's not what happened in the Newman government, of course. We know that media advisers used to make decisions under the RTI Act in the Newman government when David Christopher Lee was a minister. But just to make those comments when he knows it is untrue shows that this is about cheap political points and it is not about integrity. I also want to say uh, that day after day he stands up, makes these untruths. He has refused to apologise for these misleading comments, like when he said that Minister de Brenny should be sacked. He absolutely should apologise. And if he wants Queenslanders to take him seriously, then he should pick up the phone to Scott Morrison. Attorney, what about Bob Britton's concerns about the political Can I say that this is not a story? It wasn't a story when it ran in 2019. It's not a story today. Let me be very, very clear. Mr Britton was the Acting Legal Services Commissioner and he had some concerns about a selection panel for the role of Legal Services Commissioner which had the Bar Association and the Law Society represented. Now, that is entirely appropriate and, in fact, that has been the usual course of a selection panel for this role. And I'll get to that in a minute. The Attorney General at the time didn't necessarily agree with him on that, but she still took his concerns seriously. She reconstituted a selection panel. Uh, she also sat down with the Integrity Commissioner and got very clear formal advice that said a selection panel that comprised the Bar Association and Law Society was adequate and appropriate. She had that formal advice. And let me say, as the now Attorney General, we consult with the Law Society and the Bar Association over judicial appointments, and their members appear before those judges in court. It is entirely appropriate, and it had integrity commissioner advice. Now, Mr Britton was not forced out. He didn't apply for the role. And in fact, he wrote to the Director General in 2019 asking to be made permanent as a Deputy Legal Services Commissioner without a merit selection process. That request was denied. I want to say again, I see that Mr Nichols has been up today saying that it wasn't appropriate to have the Law Society and the Bar Association on this panel because it's a selection criteria for the Legal Services Commission, the regulator. A barrister, senior barrister and a senior solicitor was on the selection panel when Jared Blay appointed their Legal Services Commissioner, Mr Crawson, in uh, 2014. So uh, I just cannot believe that the LNP are trying to make a matter out of this when it's the exact same process they followed and also they know that there was integrity advice at the time. I want to say in relation to Mr Corson, uh, who was the Legal Services Commissioner that Jared Blay appointed, he also was the Attorney General, National Party under, in the uh, Joe Bjorka peterson government. So I just want to make that point as well. Did the, uh, did the Integrity Commissioner's advice change? Because there seems some conjecture over whether her initial advice was there was a conflict, but then you suggest that her advice was that this process was correct. The reports that I've read in the paper today say that the Integrity Commissioner said 
uh, that some people may find that there is a perception of conflict. But then when she sat down with the attorney, and I understand at that meeting the Deputy Integrity Commissioner was there as well, and the attorney outlined the process that has been used previously, the process that we go through for judicial appointments, the Integrity Commissioner then provided very lengthy formal advice that the panel uh, members were adequate and appropriate. So again, I would say this is absolutely not a story. Even if it's not a story, you've now got three integrity-related bureaucrats who have said there needs to be a wider inquiry. Are all three of these um, former or outgoing bureaucrats, you know, are they all just making it up? Why aren't three people with similar claims worthy of consideration by the government? I just want to say that all of these um, complaints have been taken seriously and we have followed absolutely, in every case, the proper process. So the complaints uh, by Mr Britton uh, were taken seriously by the Attorney-General back in 2019 uh, and she sought Integrity Commissioner advice. The complaints um, from the Integrity Commissioner are currently before the C, the standing Royal Commission that we have in this state. Uh, and the State Archivist's concerns about an annual report are being investigated by the Director-General. So I just want to say we are taking these complaints seriously, but we are following a proper process. If David Christofoli and the LNP want a, a new Royal Commission, why don't they refer any matters or information they have before them to the standing Royal Commission that we've had in this state since 1989, the C? If they have any information, that's where they should go. Does that Director General probe need to be made public, the outcome of it? Uh, well, I understand the Director General has said that that will depend on the nature of uh, the investigation, and I understand that terms of reference for that investigation will be released today. Thank you.